Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda. I'm a YSP research associate. And today I'm going to talk about the development of the Growth Chamber Wiki. I wanted to begin this presentation with a question. Do plants grow in space? Those who are not familiar with botany or astrobotany may not know the answer, and they can wonder if plants can grow in microgravity at all. So to demonstrate that, uh, in fact, it was already shown that plants can indeed grow in microgravity, as long as they are located in well-ventilated areas. And another proof of that is the seed to growth, uh, the demonstration of the seed to seed growth experiment of Arabidopsis thaliana, which is a model, it's a model plant for, for botany, and it showed no difference with ground controls. So now that we have our answer, our answer, yes, plants can indeed grow in space controlled environments. We can ask ourselves, but why grow plants in space? And well, to answer that, we have to dig a little bit into how astronauts manage to live, to survive in the ISS, for example. Their survival is actually guaranteed by life support systems which is a set of equipment designed to provide and designed to provide the necessary conditions for human survival on challenging conditions, such as a spacecraft. So the, LS, the LSS has to guarantee a viable, a viable environment for the astronauts with water, oxygen, uh, adequate temperature and pressure, um, resi uh, residue recycle and et cetera. However, the LSS faced some drawbacks. It can provide fresh food and it can support long distance, long distance missions. For example, how do you guarantee the quality of the food for a long period of time? So in this context, uh, plants emerge as a possibility to, enha to enhance the life support systems. For example, they're able to produce fresh food. They can promote water atmosphere recycling by generating oxygen and consuming carbon dioxide produced by the, produced by the astronauts. Uh, they can promote, promote water recycling and improve the mental health of the astronauts. So now we know the importance of studying, studying plants in space. Since the 60s, almost 30 growth chambers have been sent to space and have been used to conduct hundreds, hundreds of space plant experiments. However, the literature from these studies can be difficult to access, especially the literature before the year 2000. And to address this issue, the SALAD project, which is the project that, I'm, that I am working on, the YSB, developed the Growth Chamber Wiki, which is an online library that compiles all information regarding the growth chambers that have been flown to space. So the Growth Chamber Wiki aims to consolidate all of the published information about the growth chamber hardware and about space plants into small, into small comprehensible articles. And one of our goals with these articles is to map the evolution in space growth chamber across space and time, including the improvements in lightning, nutrient delivered systems, uh, automation, environmental sensors, data streaming, et cetera. This is a timeline of a couple of growth chamber that have been flown. The, AD, the ED6162 was the first long duration space growth chamber. And the greenhouse, the greenhouse in space and the LME growth chambers, these articles I took part in writing. I also took part in editing the biomass production system growth chamber, which was launched in 2002. And veggie, I just put veggie here because it's a famous it's a famous growth chamber that's that's still active to this day. 
but today I'll be only focusing on the LME roof chamber. So let's talk about it. Oh, okay, not yet. This is just, I mean, we follow this template when writing the articles. So we talk about the design, such as the physical design, the materials that were used for the build, how the chamber was created, the dimensions. And we also talk about the, the time period that it was active, what experiments it, what experiments it held, what plants, they like what what they grow, what what type of plants were sent, and reference of of course. So finally, we're going to talk about the LME, which stands for the Lunar Micro Ecosystem. So in the beginning of 2019, China China's Chang'e Four spacecraft carried the growth chamber to the moon. This mission had quite a big impact because it was the first. It was the first successful landing on the far side of the moon, and it was also the first biological experiment ever conducted on the lunar, surf on the lunar surface. Mm. This growth chamber contained six life forms, rape seeds, cotton seeds, potato seeds, and Arabidopsis seeds, and yeast and fruit fly eggs. The objective was to create um, a mini ecosystem comprising of consumer com comprising of producers, consumers, and decomposers under the moon conditions, such as low gravity, intense, intense radiation, and wild temperature variations. This is the, the growth chamber, the LME. And inside this canister, there's water, soil, two small cameras, and a heat control system. And the natural light was channeled into the container via a light pipe on its top surface. And this enables this enabled the photosynthesis. So the LME experiment didn't run for, for a very long time. It, it was turned on right after the craft landed on the moon. And after a couple of, of hours, the water was successfully injected into the biological warehouse, basically where it's located, where the seeds and the, and the other organisms were located. And after the water injection, a cattle sprout has started to grow, though no other plants were found growing. And since the landing, the LME kept working for around one lunar day which is around 14 Earth days. After that, the, the LME entered its first, lunar its first lunar night after the craft landing. And this meant that the LME was part of, which the LME was part of leaving the environment dark and frozen. This meant that, there's, that there were no more natural sunlight and no more temperature control. And this lasted for about 18 Earth days. And then when the, when the LME reached the second lunar day after the landing, the power was re-switched on and the temperature was controlled again. And well, when the canister, sorry, surprisingly, the cotton seedlings were still green and erect, even despite the fact that they were in complete cold temperatures and complete dark for 18 Earth days. And this, this is the cool part of the experiment. The cotton seedlings were, were able to deal with the harsh conditions of the moon. And in contrast, the seedlings on Earth, on the control experiment, they died within the same time frame, within the, the same time frame. So the seedlings on Earth died while the seedlings on Moon survived the harsh con the harsh conditions. Well, in conclusion, by thoroughly describing these chambers and their associated plant growth experiments, um, the salad project facilitates easy referencing and paves the way for future advancements in space, space cultivation, space plant cultivation. So the Growth Chamber Wiki 
ser serves as the first repository of information for every growth chamber ever deployed. And our initiative seeks to, seeks to simplify access to complex literature and again paves the way for future advancements in space plant cultivation. Thank you. I wanted to thank my my team. This is not everyone, but well, these are some members of the tele, of the salad team. And of course, thanks to Blue Marble and the YSP. And that's it. <laughs> thank you. Yay, great job, Amanda. Um, that's awesome. We have some hands going up already. And so I will call on Ellen first since I saw saw that hand up first. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, this is a great talk. I, I learned so much. Um, I did have one question, and it's okay if you don't know the answer to this, but um, were the seedlings um, sent with like an entire like environmental eco ecological system? Like were there microbes, were there fungi also in the you know soil sample? Like, or was it just the plant and dirt and that was all that was sent? No, there was yeast and fruit fly eggs. They wanted to create a whole biosphere to like a, a really small ecosystem. So there were not not only seeds, but fungus and and animals, fruit fly eggs. <laughs> but only the cotton well, only the cotton man managed to grow. So it kind of didn't work out. The 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 whole ecosystem, but the cotton at least grew. Sanjo, you have your hand up next. Thank you, Amanda. I really enjoyed this presentation. I also learned a lot. I have to ask, how did the seeds on the moon survive, whereas the ones on Earth did not? That's incredible. Yes, indeed. Well, the authors, they proposed a bunch of code resilience mechanisms. I'm not, I mean, it's really complex. I don't know how to explain it, but I can, I can send you the article about the experiment, the whole experiment, and they discuss about it there. Yeah, fantastic. You could put it in the in the chat or on the Blue Second channel. That's fantastic. Yeah, I would, I, would, I would do that. Can I stop sharing my screen? Yeah, you can that? stop. OK. Awesome. Oh, another hand came up. Priya? Uh, yeah, I am absolutely flabbergasted that anybody would want to propagate fruit flies. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you're trying to do an ecosystem do you have any idea why they i mean you know fr fruit flies are very important and there's been great research and is a great uh, role model for um as a model organism don't get me wrong but if you're trying to grow plants and have fruit flies it just seems like it's counterproductive do you know why they chose fruit flies um as their animal model i think it served as food for the yeast I think it was there. The, the fruit reach. flies would be food for the yeast. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Hmm. I, I and think... what would they eat? Like, they would decompose the fruit fly eggs. <laughs> but the no, fruit not... flies, what would they they eat? I'm sorry. Ah, the fruit flies. Yeah. I don't know. I have to think about it. I mean... When I was working with this growth chamber, the the authors they they just justified their choices, their choice choices. So there has to be explanation and explanation for the the fruit fly eggs. But right now I don't know how to answer properly. Yeah, 